This is a Friday Shoes production. It's a lesson 9 3 in our books on page 475. And the target is I can represent linear functions using function tables and graphs. Now we've been talking about functions for a couple days. Functions can be represented in words, in a table, with a graph, and as ordered pairs. And our main concept, you can see here, they have some examples of that where we have words and equation, ordered pair for graphing, and we have a table. So they use the example y equals x minus 1, or in words we would say the value of y is 1 less than the corresponding value of x. They also have some ordered pairs that make those true. The x and y's that you would put in would make the left side equal to the right side, where they have 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, and 3, 2. They also have a table. So they show you a table, what it looks like, which generates those ordered pairs. And then also they have the graph, where you'd have to graph those uh, four points, and you can see it makes a straight line. So that, those are the concepts we're looking at here and actually being able to represent functions. So let's look at an example. It says graph a function. School supplies. A school store sells book covers for $2 each, and, a note, and notebooks cost a dollar. Tony wants to buy some of each. The cost of X book covers and Y book notebooks is well two dollars times however many notebooks or notebooks you get or books you get and then y is just one dollar so it's one times y which is just y so you have two x plus y tony has five dollars to spend so two times however many books he gets plus however many notebooks y he gets equals five graph two x plus y equals five to find how many covers and notebooks Tony can buy. Now this is a little bit more in depth, but what they do is they take the equation here and they solve it for y. And that makes it simpler for us to create a table. So that's what they do for you. You notice they've modified 2x plus y equals 5 to subtract the 2x from both sides, and now they have y equals 5 minus 2x. And then they create a table. It says the equation y equals 5 minus 2x represents a function. Choose values for x and substitute them in to find y. So you're making up your x values and you're just plugging them into this equation and finding your corresponding y values. If you can't see that, that's right here. So you take your x values, plug them on in, and they're, they're plugging them in right there. And then you get your corresponding y values and you put them together for your ordered pair. And then, of course, you go over here and you graph them. And there they are. Those are the four points that they graphed. And basically it says she cannot buy negative amounts. So she can buy zero covers and five notebooks, one cover and three notebooks, two covers and one notebook. Those are the only options she has to purchase. And uh, that, those are right here. Since we're talking about notebooks and books, all those add up to $5. All right, that was quick. But why don't you try it here? You're going to need to make a table and make a graph. So you're going to need to create a table on paper and then also, you know, have graph paper or create a little graph of your own. So here it is. A repeating pattern is made using six triangular tiles, X, and one rectangular tile, Y. Graph the function 6X plus Y equals 35 to find the number of each tile needed if 35 tiles are used. So if you're going to use 35 tiles and use this pattern, that's what the function would look like. 6X plus Y equals 35. All right, step one. You're going to take your 6X plus Y equals 35 and solve it for a variable. In this case, we're going to solve it for Y, meaning get Y by itself. And to do that, all we have to do is subtract the 6X from the left side and the right side. When you subtract it from the left side, it disappears. When you subtract it from the right side, you end up with 35 minus 6x. Right there, we have it solved for y now. Then we can put it into our table and come up with some values. Now, I've done it already for you. So you have your x, and then these numbers here that you see, these numbers, I'm just, I'm just making them up. I'm just plugging them in. Uh, if you had one, and the, that x is going to be the uh, rectangular tiles. So however many, um, or excuse me, triangular tiles, you need six triangular tiles X. So you have those six times whatever that might be. And I just plugged in one through five on my own. And when I do that, you can see the numbers come out to 29, 30, 23, 17, 11, and five for Y. 
and I created the ordered pairs that I can now graph. So when you actually go to graph them, here's what it looks like. And your graph may look a little bit different. This is just an L graph, meaning they're using the first quadrant or the top right corner of your graph. And they graph the points that correspond to this ordered pairs right here. All right. Let's take a look at example two here. It says graph a function. It says graph y equals x plus two. Well, what do we do first? It says select any four values for the input x. Now this is no story involved, just here, graph this equation. And you gotta remember these equations are linear equations. They're gonna generate lines here. Select any four values for the input x. Substitute these values for x to find the output y. And they've done that for us here. They've given 0, 1, 2, and 3 for x. They've plugged it in, and they've gotten the y values out, and then they put them into an ordered pair. Now, of course, let's graph them. Graph each ordered pair. Draw a line that passes through each point. So they graphed every one of these points, and then they actually connect the dots here. Since there's no story, and you can have all the numbers in between them, you can actually have a complete line. So it says, the line is the complete graph of the function. The ordered pair corresponds to any point on the line, and that's the solution of the equation y equals x plus 2. And again, these here are linear functions. A function in which the graph of the solutions forms a line is called a linear function. Therefore, this one, y equals x plus 2, is a linear function, because you can see the line there. They all line up real nice. All right. You give it a shot. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create some tables here. So I'm going to do this for you. And then, of course, you find the points and then graph them. Going back, see how I do. All right, you got y equals x minus 5 on that first one. So you're going to plug in any values you like. Now, I've given out negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 just to give you points to plug in. You can put whatever numbers you want in, but you want to be able to graph them. So you don't want your graphs to be too big. So these numbers are small. You plug them in, then you can get the corresponding y values, and then graph them. So you'll see what I do. When I plug all these numbers in, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, in for the x, I get negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. You see a pattern there, yep. That, that's going to show that it's going to be linear. In this case, these are the ordered pairs. So now you take these points and you go to a graph, graph paper, and you actually graph them. So I'll show you what it looks like. When you graph those points, negative 2, negative 7, all the way down to 2, negative 3, you'll see you get those five points. And they all line up in a nice straight line. Draw yourself a line through it, put arrowheads on it, and that is the line that represents y equals x minus 5. Same with C here. Here's the table. Here are the values. And then here are the points generated on the line, graphed on the line, and then, of course, connected because they're all in a straight line and they create that linear function, y equals negative 2x. How about d? Similarly, we plug in all the numbers for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Do the math, come out with negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. Those are the corresponding points right here that will generate that linear equation of the line here, and now you're complete. All right, how about the test example? It says, which line graph below best represents the table of values for the ordered pairs, x comma y? So what they're saying is you have x value on the top there, and the y values are on the bottom. Usually they do this side by side, so the It'll be going up and down. This side, it goes left to right. So all you have to do is really match up negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and 1, 3. I've corresponded those. I kind of saw them. I'm like, as I'm plotting them on the graphs, notice C is the only one that actually all of them fall on. So therefore, C is the graph of this table. But you give it a shot. What are you going to do on this one? It says the graph of the line y equals 3x plus 2 is drawn on the coordinate graph. Uh, co yeah, coordinate grid. Which table of ordered pairs contains only points on this line? 
well, gosh, I don't know. Let's take a look. We got the line and we've got these points. Let's let's see here. I can take a look at this and see if this works. I'm going to plug these values in. And that's really what I want to say is plug in your x value in and check the y value out. So if I plug in negative 1 up here into this equation, does it work? So y equals 3 times negative 1 plus 2. Does that come out to be negative 5? See how it's supposed to come out to be negative 5? Does this equal negative 5? No, that's negative 3 plus 2. That's going to be negative 1. So it's not going to be this one. How about G? How about G? Let's take a look. I'm going to plug in this X value, come up with this Y value. All right? Y equals 3 times negative 1 plus 2. Well, that does act, it's negative 3 plus 2. That does actually come out to negative 1. So that one worked. You got to check all of them. You can't just check one. So let's check this next one. Plug in 5. Does 5 work? I don't know. We'll find out. So y equals 3 times 5 plus 2. Is that going to be, what's that, 15 plus 2? Is that 17? So does this come out to 7? Ooh, no, it doesn't. No, nope, that didn't work there either. So G's not working. All right. Let's try another one here. Let's try H. Let's plug in negative 6 and see we come up with 0. So we have y equals 3 times negative 6 plus 2, does that equal 0? No, I don't think so. That's negative 18 plus 2. That's negative 16. So it didn't come out to 0. That doesn't work. Well, my guess is going to be it's J. But let's just make sure. All right, so let's plug in negative 3 and see if it comes out to be negative 7. So y equals negative, or excuse me, 3 times negative 3 plus 2. And if you do that, that actually comes out to be negative 7. So that's good. Let's try negative 1. All right, so let's go y equals 3 times negative 1 plus 2. That comes out to be hmm, negative 1. Good. So that's what we wanted. That worked out. Looks like we're going down the line here. It seems like it's working, so that's a good sign. Let's see here, y equals, we're plugging in 1 now, see if we can get 5. So 3 times 1 plus 2, yep, yeah, that's 5. So that worked. And then our last one. y equals 3 times 2 plus 2. That's 6 plus 2, that's 8. Yep. Yeah. So that worked too. So it's definitely going to be j. J is our answer. All right, don't, ha don't hesitate to rewatch the video or, of course, look at the book for uh, some more guidance on those examples. Or you can look at some of the personal tutor videos we have for you online in the online textbook. As usual, this has been a Friday Shoes production.